Hello and welcome back to FreePhotoshop.com and this week's free video tutorial. The subject of this week is going to be adjustment layers here inside Photoshop Elements. And the first thing I want you to do is open up the two images I've supplied along with this video. I'm going to switch over to Windows Explorer and the two files are Blue Jelly to Be and Blue Jelly Banner. So go ahead and click on one of them and then Alt or Option click on the other. And then we can drag one of these files, which in turn will drag both of them, seeing as they're both active. Drag them down to the taskbar, which is just out of view here on my, uh, my screen. And I've already got elements open in the editing mode, by the way. So the program's going to appear down here in the taskbar that's just out of view. I'm going to drag them down onto the elements icon. And then Windows should switch to elements and then we can safely drag them into the workspace and drop them and those images will be copied into Photoshop Elements. And that's great, but now we want to combine the images, so come down here to the project bin and double click on the blue jelly banner icon to ensure that image is loaded up. Then I want you to grab the move tool by either grabbing it from the top of the toolbox right up here or pressing the V key on the keyboard. Now I want you to drag the banner and place it into the blue jelly to be image. And if by any chance you can't see the image right off, then either drag into the tabs that you may see up here at the top of the workspace, and that will depend on whether or not you're working with tabs in the first place. Or the other way to work is by dragging it onto the project bin down here at the bottom, and then directly onto the image actually in the project bin down here. However you do it, you should now see the blue jelly 2B image with the banner placed squarely in the middle. Now to move it into position, hold down the shift key on the keyboard and drag the banner down. And we'll want to place it in the gap at the bottom just like so. And it's probably going to be a bit fiddly to get it into the exact position you want. But if your patience is strong today, then you should eventually be able to place it in the middle between the glass and the bottom of the image. Alright, we're there. Now on to adjustment layers and what we're planning to do with this image because at the moment we've got an image called Blue Jelly to be and a banner that's advertising Blue Jelly along with a promise that it's guaranteed to make all your blue days go away. Some promise to make. The only problem we have at the moment is the jelly is red and we need it to be blue. So let's add a hue saturation adjustment layer to achieve our mission and there's two ways we could do this. One would be to come up to the enhance menu then to choose adjust color and then adjust hue saturation but if we were to do it that way then we'd be directly affecting the image and when we applied our changes there'd be no way back so that way affords us little flexibility in that we won't be able to change our values in the future should we require it. We wouldn't be able to know what our values were once we applied them either and we wouldn't even be able to get our original image back unless of course we started right from the beginning by opening up the original image inside Photoshop Elements. The second way is the best way in every respect and that's to use an adjustment layer. So come down to the bottom of the layers panel and you should see this little half black, half white icon with an ultra small arrow below it. Give that a click and we get our adjustment layer menu. And one of these adjustment layers you should notice is a hue saturation adjustment. So go ahead and give it a click and that should switch us out to the adjustments panel where we get all of our controls for this particular layer of adjustments. Now notice first of all, if I click back into my layers panel, you'll see we get this additional layer called hue saturation. So instead of the adjustment being applied to the actual layer, it's applied to its own independent layer. Now let's switch back to the adjustments panel because I want to make some changes in order to turn this jelly blue. And if you can't see your adjustments layer, then you can open it from up here in the Windows menu. Now, there's a stack of things we can achieve with this dialog box. 
and I'm not going to go into all of those now but we are going to take a look at this hue option at the top if I move this slider then all the colors in the image start to change and we can indeed turn the jelly blue by moving the slider over to the left the problem is we're shifting all the colors in the image so not only is the jelly changing but so is the angel delight and the table and the glow around this banner at the bottom that's too much so let's reset these values by clicking on this little arrow icon that looks similar to the standard refresh icon you get in a lot of programs now let's use this master drop down menu to select the range of colors we want to affect so you click on the drop down arrow if you haven't already and no surprises we're going to select the red option because those are the colors we want to target now drag the hue slider over to the left and you should notice that only the red areas of the image are changing so that's going to be the raspberries on top and the jelly and the banner but we can fix the banner easily because it's on a separate layer we're also going to see a little shift in colors in the table itself and if that bothers you I'll show you how to fix that by employing a mask in lessons two and three in this subject a little later on all in all though I'm happy with this effect so I'll switch back to the layers panel now as you can see we've got all of our color modifications held in this layer and as far as layers go it behaves in exactly the same way as a normal layer so I can change the opacity to see less of the effect 0% will hide the adjustment completely 50% will allow me to see half of it and half of the original colors and so on and so forth we can also change the blending mode and also its position in the layer stacking order because one very important thing to know about adjustment layers is that they only affect everything below them in the stack so if I move this layer down below the banner by dragging on it and releasing over the background layer we're now affecting whatever is on the background layer using the exact same method i.e. only reds but we're not changing anything in the banner layer and therefore it's returned to its original colors and that of course is because it's now above the adjustment layer however I did actually quite like the blue banner because it matched the blue jelly so I'll drag the banner layer back to the top of the stack and remember we're still not going to change the color of that blue glow around the banner because the adjustment layer is only amending colors in the blue spectrum or in the red spectrum I should say so it's converting colors that were previously red to blue alright something else to know about these adjustment layers is that like I said earlier we always have access to the live settings and can go back in and change them whenever we want and without fear that we're damaging the colors permanently we can do that by simply double clicking on the adjustment layer icon itself to open up the adjustments panel and see our changes still active in the dialog box so here's our amended hue value we can change that again if we want in fact we can make any changes we need to whilst we're here and know for absolute sure that none of them are going to be permanent to confirm these changes we can simply flip back to the layers panel by clicking in the header right here alright so there we have it a basic explanation of adjustment layers however I'm not finished there come back and join me in part two of this tutorial and I'll show you what this blank mask is doing on the right side of the adjustment layer as it turns out it's an extremely powerful tool and we're going to use it to remove the blue tinge and noisy pixels from the table area thanks for joining me as always here at freephotoshop.com and I'll see you in part two